Hi guys, this is Tom. Um, they asked me to tell you guys for the DAE Vault series to tell you a bit about programming in C++. That has been one of these uh, things that I promised I would do and then didn't realize what the problem that would be because let's face it, um, C++ is not something I can explain to you guys in one hour. Our students do several years to really master C++. So what I'm going to do is introduce you a bit to the concept of programming in C++. We'll see some kind of semi-practical, semi-practical example. I will just, um, just see it as a teaser. For those of you who can already program, I've, I've made sure to talk a bit about something interesting maybe tease you a bit about challenging you to find out how how some things work for those who can't program we're really gonna start from zero oh by the way who am i my name is tom tesh i uh, actually teach programming and programming related courses together with my colleagues at digital arts and entertainment in kortrijk belgium okay um the first problem we're gonna face is that it's not that simple to um, to just set up an environment in a couple of minutes so you can do some C++. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna avoid asking you who of you is running Linux, who is doing Windows, are some people of you on Mac OS. So we're doing, we're gonna do browser based stuff. Yes, I kid you not, we're really gonna do browser based stuff, but don't worry too much about it. It'll be more fun than you think, and it's, it's going to be, even though it's going to be real C++. You just open a browser window and drag it on the screen. Here we go. And we go to a site called godbolt.org. You should get, if it's the first time, something about the privacy policy, blah, blah, blah. Since we're sending sending programs over the internet to some people who will actually run the software, compile and run the software for us on their computers. I mean, yeah, there's some privacy issue there, so don't write anything secret. Funny story, why is it called Godbolt? Because the guy believes in Thor and somehow lightning will be thrown from a god. Lightning bolts, no. The guy is actually, the, the guy who made the site is actually called Matt Godbolt. It's a very interesting project. I highly recommend you do some more stuff with it. I'll also consent to this. We don't need the example they give, so we'll just delete that. Okay, first of all, um, yeah, let me just add a source editor. This is where we're gonna type, type in our code. And um, I'm also gonna need something to see the results. This is not a real program, so let's delete this. It's just gonna confuse us. Now, no. to know about C++, you have to know something about what is C++ doing. C++ is one of those programming languages that kind of sounds like English, so you can kind of read it as a human being, especially if you're trained for it, but it's getting translated by something called a compiler into a program that can, can be run by a computer. If you run uh, the latest generation games, they will probably be compiled games they will be executables that run on your windows machine or on your mac or um, whatever it might be or on your console even okay well that's all boring um let's write our first little program right right um again at this stage you're just gonna have to believe me about a couple of things and um yeah first of all i want to put something on the screen you know, the tradition is we're gonna say hello world in our first program. So we'll stick with tradition, at least partially. If I want to put something on the screen, I need some kind of, of library that does input and output. We're not just gonna use output. So um, but that doesn't matter. I need the entire library for input and output. And that's called IO stream. So we're gonna type a hashtag include IO stream like so. to put the space in between 
but that's not a requirement. Now, already there's some things we can note. You see the, the text here becomes blue. That means it's a, it's a keyword of C++. The, the software recognizes it. It's something important, so it tags it in blue for us. It gives us some kind of um, error because we don't have a reference to main. Right? When you write a program, the program doesn't really know where to start, so it will always look for something called the main function and run that. So just bear with me. We're going to make a main function like so. Okay, now our compiler here on the right is not complaining anymore. It's saying my program returned zero. I can actually switch compilers and try something out on other compilers. But we're not, that's all stuff we're not going to do that's advanced. By the way, let it be clear that there's a whole bunch of topics we're not going to touch upon today. We're not going to touch on classes. We're not going to touch on inputs, we're not going to touch on sound, we're not going to touch on templates, we're not going to touch on variable types. So there's a whole bunch of stuff of stuff we're not going to touch upon. Okay. So I have something called main. Let me just explain what this whole bunch of seemingly random characters means. This means I have a thing called main. It's a function. I can recognize this by the braces behind it. And then between curly braces, I describe what the function does. I can actually choose to put that curly brace on the next line. That's the same thing. But what is, what's, what's the int stand for? Well, the main will return an integer to say if there were any problems with my program. If I forget to tell the, pro the, the program to return something, it will automatically return zero. But just as a good habit, We'll say that our program worked correctly and we'll tell it to return zero. Oh, look, here it says the program returns zero. Let me just try something. What if I type in 42? Look at that. Isn't that glorious? Now my program returned 42. That's not very useful. Um, let's make a program that actually does something. So again, bear with me. We're going to read something from the standard namespace. So we type std two columns, then c out. It's not count, but c out. It's the character output. Then we have an operation. This is basically telling it to, yeah, shove something into c out. And what do we sho shove into it? Well, the thing I want to print, I put it between um, quotes, double quote. So what I want, what do I want to say? Hello. DAE Volters, like so. And you can't forget every statement we have to end with a semicolon. Okay. Okay. Let's look at our program on the right. It prints hello DAE Volters. Well, this is great. This is great, but I mean, this is boring. Does that mean? I can copy a bit of text and then say, hello, other people too. Oh, that's not nice. It just sticks it to the end here. Oh, okay. I will just tell it. Add a s from the uh, standard namespace, add an end line. Wow. That's a whole bunch of characters. Actually, at this point, I recommend you stop the video just to just to try this out because from here on it's gonna go a bit faster. Um, but you can play around with it. C plus plus is the most powerful and fastest language in the world. Every professional tri AAA game, almost every AAA game, is is written in C plus plus. Okay, so. Um, you might have noticed that I had some white space here. I mean, I'm, I'm pressing spacebar, and it, that doesn't matter to C++. But there's tradition that we that we tidy stuff up and we put stuff underneath each other. Um, there's been holy wars amongst programmers whether that opening curly brace should be on a new line or an other line. The, the nice thing about this environment is that we can tell it, oh, you know, oh, I screwed this up completely. Look at this return. I put it there. Oh, it's, it's, it's so ugly now. And then you can just say, um, 
I'm gonna do Control F9, and it's gonna organize it for me, right? You could press Control F9. You could also just right click and say Format Text. But I like using my keyboard, Control F9. Okay, so we've we've written our first little C++ program. That's it for today. Bye. Have a night. Oh no, no, that's right. I can't say that. Um, I promised to do something useful. Something useful. This is. You know, this is my day off. I, I don't want to do something useful. I want to, to play games and I want to do other stuff. What do other people do in their free time? Oh, oh I know. You know what some people do? They, they make these uh, these puzzles, these Sudoku puzzles. You, you, you know Sudoku? I'm not very good at it. My sister's very good at it. Actually, my wife is also very good. I'm not very good at it. But I'm good at programming. Maybe I can write a program to solve Sudokus. That would be nice, right? But first, first, what's a Sudoku? Let me explain. Let me explain. It's not very hard. So, uh, what's a Sudoku? Well, you, it consists of, of like a, a grid that has nine rows and nine columns, and then that grid is subdivided into uh, three by three subgrids. And then, when you get a Sudoku problem, some of these are filled out. See how they are filled out um, with numbers and you have to fill in the other numbers. Of course, you can't just fill in random numbers. Every number you fill out has to be a number between one and nine. Um, and there's some rules. Imagine I want to put a number there in the, in the middle where I put the, where I put the question mark. Let me take my laser pointer. This thing should have a laser pointer. Look at it. I have a laser pointer. Nice. There's a question mark here. Well, I can put any number I want, but it can be a 7, it can be a 9, it can be a 6, it can be a 2, it can be a 1, and it can be an 8 either. Because every number, every digit, can only be in each column once. Okay? That's the first rule. Second rule. Second rule is... Any number you pick can only be in each row once. So that means in this row you can't have a 1, a 3, an 8, or a 4. That's going to get annoying fast. So that's the second rule. And then the third rule. I took one that's easier to explain in the upper corner here. Um, if you look at this one, can I? Let's, let's ask ourselves the question, can I put a 6 here? Well, there's no 6 in this, in this row. There's no 6 in this column, but there's already a 6 in this subgrid, so 6 is forbidden here also. So every subgrid can only have each digit once as well. Okay. Okay, the most important thing to know when you're writing a program is uh, go at it step by step. I don't want to make this too ugly. I'm, I'm had artist before me in this DAE vault thing so I, I don't want, want to make the ugliest thing let's I'm gonna try to draw a grid I'm gonna try to draw a grid but I, I said I wasn't gonna do graphics well this is gonna get hard but hard is feasible um yeah this is a little tryout program let me let me take a new one so I'm going to godbolt.org I'm starting a new program we know the drill by now. We add a new execution thingy. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Add a source editor. And to that, I want to add an execution thingy. And we know that I have to do this includes IO stream if I want to put something, if I want to put something on the screen. And I need a function main. That function returns an integer. What's an integer number? Well, an integer number would be something like 0, 1, 2. 0 0.5 is not an integer number. Okay, and we're going to take the good habit of explicitly returning 0 because we have no problems with this function. Okay, and I want to draw this grid. Of course, we already know a bit of C++. We know what we could do. We could just draw the first line of the grid like so. And then I'm going to use minuses. Huh? I'm going to draw the line like so. I, I'm not really counting it. 
Oh, my semicolon after that. Wow, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, but I don't know if I have enough minuses and, and also I have to type a lot and that's so tiring. Let's do something else. If I want to repeat something in C++, there's something called a for loop. Again, I'm not going to go through all the details, but if I want to repeat something, I tell the compiler I need a for loop. For that for loop, I will initialize an integer called i. By just typing um, curly braces after my i, I'm initializing it to zero. And I will tell it as long as i is smaller than 10, then increase i every time. And what do I want to do? what's between curly braces Oof, that's a whole lot of stuff that's happening here we'll discuss it in in more detail in a bit so i can see out something can i just do this okay so does it, does it print one two three four five six seven eight nine ten oh yeah it started at zero so the first time I go through this loop, let's let's pretend we're a computer and we're doing this loop. What's it saying? It's telling you, oh, hi computer. Is this the first time you're doing this loop? Make a variable called i. A variable, that's the kind of like a little box. And in that box, you can put a value. And it's one of those baby toys, you know? It has a, a shape on the top and it's telling you which type of thing you can put into it by typing int here. I'm saying, oh, this, this little box can only contain called I has a zero to start with. I could explicitly type the zero here. Um, it has a zero to start with. Let's type it explicitly because you're beginners. Um, I have a variable I, I put a zero into it when it's the first time I do this for. Okay. Next step. I check whether I is smaller than 10. Well, I just put zero in it. Of course it's smaller than 10. Then I execute everything that's in the body of my for loop, which means I print one of those minuses. And after I'm done, plus plus i, that means increase i by one. So i used to be zero, now it's one. It's not the first time I do the loop. I don't have to create a variable and put a zero in it. I already have it. And then I check. Is i smaller than 10? Well, i is 1 now. Yes, it's yes, it's smaller than 10. So I'll put print out another minus. Oh, wow, this is great. This is great, but if I think about it, right, I want some spacing around it. And oh, I'm not very good at maths. Let's just do try and error. There we go. I'll just say 20. I'll see, I'll see where we go from there. That's my first little loop. Okay, after I'm done with this, after I'm done with this, I want to print some numbers. Right now, I'm just going to uh, fill it out with the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I'm going to make a new 4. Um, well, I can call, I can put an, I can use the variable i again. Why is that? This i variable I made only exists between these curly braces here. So that's great. So I make a new variable i. If this is all going a bit fast for you, um, but it's, it seems very interesting, please join the game development major in digital arts and entertainment. You will have the time of your life, learn to make great games, make great friends along the way. And um, yeah. Do awesome stuff. Okay, so we already know whatever I put here will be will be done 10 times. That's great. So if I put the same stuff in here, let me just take this, copy it, and put it here. Then I'll print a second line. Oh, but it printed the second line after this one. No, I wanted it to take a new line. How did we do that again? Oh, yeah, just see how thing. A end line. There we go. 
So I printed out 20 um, minuses and this, this line here prints out 20 minuses. I'm gonna forget what that does. Now, an important part of writing code is writing comments. The four underneath prints a line of minuses. See how this line is in green? Everything that you put behind two slashes, that's actually a comment. The compiler will ignore it. You put that there for the humans that read. Minus is the, the, the thick one as a two. Is this? I don't know. I'm going to solve it another way. The four underneath prints a line of minuses. This takes a new line. I can put this after line as, as well. Oh. I can put this after line as well. New line. And here again, I have a follow, but I wanted to print out numbers from one to nine. What if I just tell it to print I? Oh, wow, this is nice. It prints zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, yeah, that's great. Um, but I wanted it to print all the numbers from one to nine. So I'm going to print I plus one. So I know it prints one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, 10. And I can't put a 10 in a Sudoku. So that means I have to reduce this a bit. There. Now it prints one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But all these numbers are stuck to each other. That's not very nice. I'll also, I'll also add in some space after it. Oh look, it's tried, it's starting to look good. Um, but I need I need ten of those minus lines and 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 ten of those. Um, yeah, again printing that that's gonna get old fast. And and you look at my look at my main function so it's getting all clogged clogged up with this information. You know you know another important thing about programming is just wishing something existed. I just wish there was a command that said print my grid like so and I, I, I put in, in, in brackets here just to explain to this function that it needs to print my grid and now it tells me oh you have an error print my grid was not declared oh, print my grid is a function let me make a function called print my grid I need to tell the compiler that this function will return nothing. It's just printing stuff on the screen. It, it doesn't return a value. It's not a calculation. I mean, you could you could write a function to calculate a sine or a cosine or something mathematical, but I'm, I'm not doing calculation. I'm just printing. So it returns nothing. I'm telling it it's a void function. It takes no parameters. We'll talk about that later. Just putting putting those braces behind it. This is telling This is telling the compiler, oh, look, this is a function. Okay, now I have a function print my grid, print my grid, and it does nothing. Well, let me put this code that I used to have in main. Let me put all this code here. Now I'm printing my grid. That's starting to look better. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's not too shabby. Or well, you, you know I, what I want to do? I want to print a line like this, then line like this, then line like this, then line like this, then line like this. Because what I want to do is print my grid and then I want to do another print my grid. It still looks crappy though. Oh man. Look at that. We probably ha need to have some end line at the end of this as well. But look, uh, we're going to have to type on this for hours and hours. And, and, and I mean, look at it. The line is not even ready yet. Oh. Oh, let's um, let's think about this a bit more. 
let's say let's say well i have to print let's just print all the numbers i'll forget about the lines for a bit i was over enthusiastic here i just want to print the numbers and i'm only gonna call print my grid once and it should print the grid i just print numbers so it's printing all these numbers that's fine um, and i want to do that nine times so I'm going to make a new loop. And now I'm going to do a loopception. Yes. Yes. I'm going to do a loopception. Now. I know what it's doing, but for you guys, it must be a bit confusing. Remember that I said you could uh, auto indent your code. That's uh, format the text. Oh, and now the compile. I'm going to delete some some of this stuff. We can rewrite it when I need it later. So I have a function print my grid. Inside there's a for loop, and inside the for loop there's another for loop. So I'm doing something nine times, and the thing I'm doing nine times, I do that nine times as well. So here I'm printing all of numbers. Well, if I want to have some kind of a grid, um, well, well, I might want to print, I want, might want to print, um, you know, one of those pipe symbols first, like so, with a space. Forgot my. Oh, that's nice. That is nice. Look at it. It, it looks more like a grid already. Uh, you, uh, it misses a. It misses one of those pipe symbols at the end. What could I do? Well, I'm um, before I take that end line, I'm also gonna print. Another one. This is actually called a pipe symbol, by the way. Okay. Wow. That's great. That's great. But um, you know what? I actually wanted lines in between as well. Oh, but we already wrote uh, code to write uh, lines. But now it gets more complicated. Well, I could say... I don't have to make it complicated. Let me make another loop inside that first loop. I can use I here. Why can I use I here again? I needed to use J. Oh, that's, that may be something nice to tell. See, I, I called my variable that's looping here J because inside this, inside these brackets, look how it highlights it inside these brackets, J is known. I couldn't call this J. I already had a variable J. Each variable has to have a unique name. There's exceptions with namespaces. Again, this is not something we'll talk about. If you want to know more about this, come to DAE. You'll have a great time. Also learn about C++. So um, I want to print out some minuses before I do this. So I will just do for int i going from zero starting at zero as long as i is smaller than nine i want to increment i every time and i want to put what am i gonna do i'm gonna print i'm gonna print a, a minus so how did that work again std std C out A minus. And don't forget the semicolon, of course. Well, that's great. That's great. But after after I'm done printing this entire line, I should probably take a new line. Like so. Look at me go. Um yeah, obviously I don't have minuses enough. Um, how many will I need? 
Well, let's think a bit. I have one, two, three, four. Four times 10 is 40. And do I need 41? Let's try it. If I need 41, do I need to put 42 in here? Let's give it a go. Oh, I miscounted. Look, sometimes these things happen. I'm just going to count how much too many. Are. One, two, three, four, five. I have five too much. So that should be 37. No, 37. Yeah, that looks fine. Look at it. I have a grid. It looks a bit like a Sudoku. Um, but I'm still having a small problem here. Here, I, I at the end I still miss a line to end it all off. No, let's not try to be incredibly clever about this. Let's make another function. That's incredibly clever. I'm gonna make a function called print line. Why is why do we have the word void here? Because it returns no values. And what does print line do? Well, it prints a line. The nice thing about making a function about something, oh, and taking a new line should also be part of printing that line. I, I think that's a, that's a good idea. Like so. So now I have a function called print line, which I should call each time before I you see here this loop with a J. This loop goes over every line. So each time I should um, print a line. Then I should do this nine times. So I print a line, I print the numbers. And when I'm done with all this, I'll print a line just to finish it all up, like so. Did that work now? That seems to have worked. My, my font is a bit too big. I want to see my Sudoku on one screen. Let me, okay, that's better. I think, I, I hope you can still read it. I think so. Okay, that's nice. But you know, we could we could still improve it a little bit. Think about it. You know what's what what would be nice if instead of all being minuses, every time it meets up with it, with one of these pipe symbols, it's a plus. So I need to improve my print line function. So when is when does it have to be a plus? Well, it has to be a plus the first time. But we already know when we count like a computer, we initialize stuff at zero. So the first time it's zero. Then it must be a minus for one, two, three. And the fourth one, when it's four, it needs to be a plus again. And then five, six, seven. And when it's eight, then it needs to be a plus again. Nine, 10, 11, 12 minus needs to be a plus again. So every time that this counter i is divisible by four, right? Because zero is divisible by four. Um, every time I should actually, um, I should actually put a plus instead of a minus. I have, I kept my other um, compiler thingy open here because I want to, I want to try some stuff out here. So I told you guys I can make a variable and I give it type. So I have an integer called a, and I give it the value eight, like so. And now I'm gonna make another variable called b. I'm just gonna put zero in there. And now I'm gonna tell the computer, the compiler actually, b equals a divided by b. Well, that, I'm not going to have a good time because I'm trying to divide by v, by zero. Let's say a plus one. That means I can print out B. Oh, it's a nine. That's great. Um, and I can do plus two as well. Uh, 
and I can divide by two. That's a four. I can multiply by two. That's a star. A was eight. I multiply eight by two. That gives me 16. I print out that 16. Okay, that's all very easy. Wait, wait. But I want to know, remember I want to pl to put a plus every time something is divisible. First, let's see, how do I know if something is divisible? Well, the percent symbol in C++ means what's the rest when you divide by the, the second value. So 8 divided by 2 gives you rest 0. If I would take 9 divided by 2, that would give me rest 1. Okay, so if I take the rest by 4, for 9 that gives me a 1. So 0 gives me a 0, 4 gives me a 0, 8 gives me a 0, 12 gives me a 0, 13. And we call this operation modulo, the rest the rest after division, after division, modulo. So 13 modulo 4 after division by 4. So I want, I want to do something if the number is dividable by 0. Wow. So I'm going to need something called an if construction and a modulo. So watch me go. If. And I'm looking at I the, the, the variable called I here. If you want to make a decision, the thing you're deciding upon, you put between brackets. If I modulo 4 equals 0, note that, note that equality, we test that with two equal signs. So, if i modulo 4 equals 0, then what do we do? Then I will see out a plus. Else, that means it not, it, if it's not divisible by 4, I will print out a minus. Oh. I'm going to do a control F9 again, just to tidy everything a bit up. So look at it. I already have this thing printed out pretty nice. And I have made a function print line, which is pretty complicated because every four characters I start, I print a plus, but we've, we found a clever way to do this by using modulo. Mm -hmm. Good. Great. Gonna use modulo maybe a bit later as well. That's gonna be a great thing. Let me just open my my recording here to see how many minutes I'm recording already. Yeah, we're, we're running slightly behind. Um, but here you are. If it's a bit longer, meh. What am I gonna do? Fire me? No. Um, stick with me. We're gonna solve Sudoku's after this. So, I have this Sudoku that I want to print out. And I've told you about variables already. You had, we had one called i here. And in this little program, we, we had one called a and b. So, now I have to think, how will I represent my problem? Well, if you have more than one number, if you have a whole list of numbers, you can put in something called an array. So, the numbers that go in there, I'm going to call that variable the numbers and it's actually a grid of nine by nine this is a two-dimensional array this contains 81 integers now the problem i have shown uh, let me go back to my slides the problem i have shown which is this one go back a bit this one um, because it's boring to see me type i um I prepared it a bit so I can cut and paste. Please forgive my laziness, but that's how I roll. 
good pro good programmers are lazy by the way if you feel of yourself oh i'm 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 actually a lazy guy you're probably going to be a great programmer so now i've put in that problem i've put in that problem into my matrix see how i use curly braces so this is a collection of nine rows this is actually telling the compiler i'm going to have nine lists containing nine integers and each list has to be declared between curly braces that's why we have this when i don't know the number that's going to be in there yet i mean you you remember the problem right the problem looked like this when i don't know the number that's going to be in there i'm going to put a zero in there so they have these fives and these sixes and whatnot Oof, this is all going to be terribly difficult but no it's not okay um yeah no i have a, a, this thing called the numbers but um it's not printing the numbers it's printing one to nine why well because i told it to print one to nine hmm. that's not good you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna tell my function print grid print the numbers by the way, this way of writing a variable, you can't have spaces in variable names, so they had to invent something. And this this is what they call camel case. You start with a lowercase letter, and then every time you have a new word, you use an uppercase letter to indicate, oh, this is, this is an uppercase word. And now my compiler is complaining. You have too many arguments for your migri print my grid function. Because you're, you're telling me to print my grid, with the numbers but in the print my grid function here you're not expecting any any variables oh yeah i'm i'm actually expecting something so it's going to be of type integers it's going to be um it's going to be the problem and it's going to be nine by nine like this okay so now i'm telling print my grid the numbers and i'm giving I'm giving it another name here i'm calling it problem and i'm i'm, I'm giving it to print my grid but print my uh, print my grid does nothing with it now i want to print out the right number right but the the beginning of wisdom is calling things by the right name this was counting lines right this was each line it would do this so i'm going to replace the name of j by line so i have now a variable instead of called j it changes nothing in how it behaves i like it i like it when my name when my names make sense i have a variable called line going from zero to nine so it's, it does the same thing and this i is actually column column i'm always hesitant on how it's written i'm so so good at writing text for humans i usually write text for machines and here i'm telling it to print out i plus one yeah i can't do that i could tell it to print column plus one that, that would do exactly the same but that, that's not what i want to do what what do i want to print out well you know what i want to print out i want it to print out the problem and which digit from the problem well, the one at line and then between, between other square brackets, column. Like so. Ooh, now it's printing 5, 0, 0, 0, 7, 0, 0, 0, 0. And then at the bottom here, I'm not going to check everything. Let's, let's, let's look at what it needed to be. So 5 and then a bunch of zeros and then 7. Yeah, you know what? And oh, this is nice to recognize for so the six, eight, two, and three in the middle there. Six, eight, two, and three in the middle there. You know, this this would be nicer to recognize if these zeros weren't printed. Oh, we can do that. That's actually really easy. I'm gonna split up that C out here. Oh. So. That one C out becomes three C outs. I can't forget the same columns here. Okay. So now I'm printing 
in three commands, I'm fr first printing a pipe with a space, then I'm printing the number, and then I'm printing another space. You know what I want? I want it, if it's a zero, I don't want it to, I, I don't want it to print something when it's a zero. Okay. So I'm going to tell it that. If the problem at location line and column equals zero um, then I will do something and else if it's not zero then I will just print out the number there um, let me let me format the text again oh that doesn't fix it look it looks horrible what's what's going wrong well 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 of course this is too small. Like, there used to be a number in there, but now there's no number in it. It's too small. Oh yeah, if there's no number in there, I will just print out a space. Unfortunately, I have some code here to do that. Okay. So here we go. Yeah, remember that in the, the middle here? That's great. That's great, great, great. Now now I, I, finally, I finally see my grid in there. Is it perfect? No, but we don't have time to do fancy graphics. At, at least it looks like a Sudoku. Now, I want to solve it. You know, I, you know what I want to be able to do? I want to be able to ask in the grid at a certain position, am I allowed to put a certain letter? So I'm going to write a function is allowed. I'm not going to say what returns yet because it's going to have to return something. I have a function is allowed. And do I pass it something? Ah, yeah, I have to pass it the data. Again, I'm choosing another name here just because I can. So I'm going to pass a data. I'm going to pass a line. I'm going to pass a, uh, uh, a column. It's really pissing me off that I know how column that I don't know how column is written. Let me just check it. Yeah, yeah. Column. Ah, I wrote it wrong. Yeah, I need one L. C, C. The thing is, since you're writing software and the variable name, the, co the, the compiler doesn't care about your variable name. It just has to be systematic. Then I write the, the error everywhere and that makes it, that makes it really horrible. So, so let me fix this. So I'm going to have, so I want to have a function called is allowed. And if I, if I pass in um, my problem and the line, the column, and then some value I want to try, but try is a word I can't use. See how it's in blue? I can't name a variable. I can't name a variable try. Um, let's call it test. Can I call it test? Oh, it stays nice and black. Yes, I can use it. But is allowed. It has to return something. Is it allowed? That's, that's true or false. How do you say this? In, in programming, well, we call this a Boolean. Something is either true or false. Um, the compiler gives me a warning that I don't have a return statement and, and if I use it somewhere, it, it will want to return something. So I'm not doing a good job and it's right. Let's start with the really simple stuff. If I try to put a value somewhere, somewhere when, wh where there's already a number, that shouldn't work. So if the data you pass me, line, column, is different from zero, note how we write different from zero, exclamation mark equals then I will return false. You can't just say, oh, and it's complaining if it, otherwise, otherwise I'll say it's just, it's allowed. 
See how false and true are also in blue, so it means something. So I'll just want to say, I'll, I want to try something, right? If I want to try, can I put a number here? Then I'll just say STD, C out. That means I'm going to print something. Can I print something? Um, is it allowed? By the numbers to in position zero zero remember we start counting at zero with programmers now um is it allowed to put a two in there well no you can't and zero zero that's this position there's already a five in there you can't put another number in there so it's it's answer it's it's answering zero and also want to put, put a bit of text this needs to be neater doesn't it So I'm going to put a question mark there, allowed. And then I'm going to put an end line there, like so. See how everything is red? That means everything is part of my text. Oh, that's because I forgot this. Okay. Allowed, zero. Okay, I, I want a space in between. But, that, but I don't want to put zero. I want it to say false. Now, this is something you guys can't know yet. So you just need to add a statement to say that this is allowed and this is allowed is std bool um, alpha and it's in one word so now it says, oh, this isn't loud. You, can, you can't just print something there, Tom. Okay, then. Okay, then. Um, let's, let's try this one at position line zero, position one. Can I put a two in there? Remember, or is allowed function isn't finished yet. I, I'm expecting it to answer true. We're testing our code. Oh, yes. It's telling me, yes, Tom, you're allowed to put a number there. Um, of course. Can I put a two there? That's unclear at this point, but okay. Um, okay. So, uh, you know what else? If that test value you, you give is smaller than, than one, and now watch carefully, or, so the number you want me to test for, or, it is larger than nine. Well, that's also not allowed, right? Can't just, you can't just say, can, can I in position here? Can I put a 13, right? Can I input a 13? No, it will tell me false. So that's also not allowed. Great. So it can't have an, an, a value there and that those are trivial tests. It, it, it can't have a value there yet. And I have to be sure the value you entered is no, if it's smaller than one or larger than nine, then I will, will also not accept it. Then how were the, how will the, were the rules again? Let's, let's think about this position. What's this position? Well, it's line zero, one, two, three, four. That's line four and position zero, one, two, three, four. So in position four, four, can I put a one there? Let's think about it. No, you can't because in this line, in this line, it's not allowed. There's a one here. So let's check the entire line. So you could type a whole bunch of stuff because there's a whole bunch of things I, I want to check, right? If, if, if I, if I, if I, if I'm telling it, check whether on line four, four, I can put a one. Right now it's going to tell me true. Because yeah, it's an empty spot and a one is not a value between, but I need to add an extra condition. I want to check, is there a one in this entire row? So how will I do this? Well, I will do it with a for loop again. So I again will make 
uh, a variable, but this time let's uh, let's uh, have it make sense, right? For int um, column, starting at zero, let's put it in there explicitly. As long as column is smaller than nine, I will, at the end of each loop, increment column with a bit. Yes, I can really type unless I'm filming myself. So right now, I'm, uh, I'm going to run through all the columns. And if data at position, um, well, the line is given is always the same. I can't use column because I can't use a variable column because I'm passing the column here. Ugh. Yeah, okay. This isn't smart. Uh, let's me take I again. If my data at position line I equals my test, then I shall return false. Like so. Um, so now it's checking in this row. I have a one in there. If I'm just checking the row, could I have a six in there? Right, I'm just checking in this same line. Um, line and row, I can use these terms interchangeably. What if I, wait, what if I try, What if I try a six, right? A six? Oh yeah, it's a lousy trick. Ah, but it, I haven't implemented this rule yet. You know, this rule that you can't have something. This is gonna be much like this one. So what I'm gonna do now is copy a bit of code. Okay, I need to copy this. Now, in the same loop, while this i is changing all the time, I'm going to check in column, in line i, on position column, is the test value already there? Now it also says false. Now, this is already pretty useful. I mean, for, for somebody who's bad at Sudoku like me, this is already helping me. So can I put a 1 in there? False. Can I put a 2 in there? False. Can I put a three in there? False. Can I put a four in there? False. Can I put a five in there? True. Uh, the five would be accepted. Let's look at all the rules. Actually, yes. There's still a rule we haven't done. There's still a rule we haven't done, and that's a that's a tiny bit that's a tiny bit annoying. The the rule of the block here. So now we have to think a bit again. When I have, for instance, this value, I want to know in which block it is, right? Because we're thinking about subgrids here. Oh, I'm not showing my, my presentation anymore. I'm sorry. This is the last bit here I have to show. Let me show it. Right? But I have to know in which subgrid I am checking. But we're programmers. We're, uh, if we're good at anything, we're good at hubris. Um, if, I, if I name these subgrids 0, 1, and 2, right? And, and then this, this is, this is, and this also 0, 1, and 2, then this is subgrid 1, 1. This is subgrid 1, 2. This is subgrid 2, 2. So all I have to do is find a way, if you give me a cell, tell you in which subgrid this is. To do that, I'm going to use something called integer division. So what is integer division? Let me go back to my small program here. If I have an A that is 7, 
And I have a B that is two. And I have a C that is A. Integer divi divided by B. So I'm dividing seven by two integer. Then I get a... Oh, I'm printing B. <laughs> Thank you. I was panicking that mathematics didn't function anymore. So seven divided by two integer division is three. Seven divided by six integer division is one. Seven divided by eight, I can type really, is zero. Now, why do I, why do I need this? Why? Well, well, I can actually, if you give me, for instance, this cell. No, let's say this cell. This is a nice one. This one's position is line 0, line 1. And then 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So its position is 0, 4. Which block is it then? It's in block 0, 2. So I need to know 0, 2. How can I do this? Um, I'm gonna go a bit faster through it because yeah you're just gonna have to believe me on this one i can know um i'm gonna call this subgrid row subgrid row is row divided by three integer division and subgrid oh it's not called low but line and this is called subgrid um column is column divided by three by three now is this true um what have i done wrong subgrid line oh i didn't give it a type how can c plus plus possibly know this is a strongly typed language every variable i create i need to give it a type it doesn't know line yes because i used uppercase since i'm an idiot when i'm typing okay so what did I say earlier? I had line two. If I divide line two, that, that gives me block zero. Okay. And this was um, colon, column four. If I divide it by three, that gives me one. So yeah, that's just believe me. This gives me, this gives me the right subgrid. And then I have to go through the entire subgrid. So what is the first cell in a subgrid let's say in this subgrid oh again bear with me a bit i'm gonna make a for loop for int i and i give it the initial value subgrid line times three that's gonna be the first line of the subgrid of that subgrid as long as i is smaller than subgrid line plus one multiplied by three and after each round, I will increment like so. Um, and I'm really making a lot of typos. I'm extremely sorry. So this will have me go through all the subgrid lines. I need to go through all the subgrid rows as well. Let me do something dangerous, which is cut and pasting. In programming, cutting and pasting is done often, often to disastrous results. I have to call this J. 
and this is subgrid column. Okay. And then I have to say if, so I'm, I'm running through the entire subgrid with this. Believe me, I am. If, um, data, first I have the line, then I have the column equals test. And I have to put my curly braces. I will return false as well. Phew. Is this gonna work now? Let's check. Here is a nice one to check. If I uh, want to put a five in here, I'm not allowed, but a six, I mean, there's no sixes in this line. There's, there's no six in this line. There's no six in this column, but there's a six in this block here. So that should be a problem. So this is position zero, one, two. So it's position zero, two. Yeah, a five shouldn't certainly not be allowed there, but can I put a six there? It will also answer me false. Just to be sure, um, let's pick another one. Could I put a five here? So this is position zero, one, two, and it's in the middle. So this four, I could put a five here. I mean, there's nothing in the in the row. There's nothing in the column, but there's all uh, there's one in my subgrid. So in zero four, what am I saying? No, in two four, can I put a five there? Let's try this. In two four, can I put a five there? No, I can't. What can I put there then? Can I put a one there? No, I can't. Let me check. Oh, yeah, no, I can't because of this one. Can I put a two in there? No. Can I put a three in there? Maybe. Just go through it. Can I put, yeah, I could, I could put a three in there. Probably. Okay. So now, now most of our work is done. And now comes the magic. The magic of computers. Um, we've learned a bit of C++. We've seen how we can enter data. We've written functions. These functions call each other. Um, now I want to solve this grid, right? Uh, I don't want to use this this allowed function. Just just I'm gonna put this in comment. So this is this will disable this line. Now I want to solve this thing. Ideally, I would just want to say. Print solution. There we go. Print a solution to this Sudoku. Well, this is a this is a known this is a known problem, right? It doesn't know this function, but I just this function just prints something. So it's called print solution. Do I need to pass anything to print solution? Well, if you think about it, I need to, to pass it my 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 problem. So. Um, I'm going to have an array, an array called problem. Like, so, um, did, did I, did I use another name there? No. Oh yeah, it's fine. I can, this one I'm, I'm going to call problem as well. Like, so it's returning nothing. And when I do print solution, I will pass to it the numbers. So I'm passing the numbers to print solution and it will print my solution. Um, if there is one. So how can I do this? Now I'm going to be a bit evil for the guys who know programming. This has been long for you because this all went very slowly. Maybe finding that subgrid is slightly interesting, but let's be honest. No, it's not once you've seen that trick with integer division, but let's, let's, solve this using a recursive solution. What does that mean, a recursive solution? Well, it means it's a function that calls itself. Whew. Okay. I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need a, a for loopception again. I'm gonna have a, my first loop is gonna be I because that's tradition. I'm gonna be explicit with my zero. As long as I is smaller than nine, I will increment I. Like so, 
Then I have another in there. Which also... So I'm going to go through all the data. I'm going through all the cells. And again, there's so much more to tell to tell about um, about C++, but there's no time. So unfortunately, please join us next academic year. You'll have a lot of fun. So I'm going through all the cells. If one of those cells is a zero, if the problem at position I oh, and J is a zero, right? What do I do? Well, I want to test out if I if I can put um, if I can put a number in. If it's allowed in problem on put position i j. Oh, what function? What value I'm gonna test for if it's a zero? What value am I going to test for? Oh, I'm, I'm going to have to test all of them. I need another four. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm, no, don't worry. I'm going to make another for loop. We're for loopceptioning further and further. So uh, what are the possible vo values? Zero is not a possible one. It should be a value from one um, smaller than 10 incremented each time you try. So if it's allowed, what do you do? Well, make that move. Just say problem at that location becomes the thing I'm trying. So now what's happened, think about this when this is running, what will happen um, um, what will happen is, oh, did I forget one of the, no, I don't think so. What is it complaining about? Yeah, I'll see when I'm done with the code. No, I should actually shit now. Oh, I forgot one here. See, I forgot to see me. Uh, I, I forgot the curly brace here and you can see it here. Like so. Yeah, that this won't solve it, of course not. So, what that, what have we done? If you think about it, I'm I'm running through all my cells. If I find one that has a zero in it, I try which number fits in there. If one of the numbers I try fits in there, then I fill it out. What's the next thing I do? Well, now I have a. No, I have a problem that's slightly less complicated. So I pass my problem. I pass my problem to the function I call again. Now imagine this was the second to last number and it's trying a number and then it's trying to put the last and that one doesn't work. That means it has to take it back. If, if I get back here, that means no, I haven't. The solution I, I tried first was not good. I'm taking this, the solution I tried back because it wasn't a good one. I tried to solve it on a deeper level and I didn't manage to get out. So I'm putting a zero back. This is actually called backtracking. And if, if it's slightly confusing right now, good. That's exactly what I'm trying for. No, if it's confusing right now, this is, this is recursive programming. It's a bit confusing the first time you do it, but trust me, um, <laughs> it will work. Um, and we will, we will explain this kind of things later, later in the academic year. If you do the AE and the G, uh, GD major. Um, so when I have gone through all the things, calling return in a function just returns and say, just stop the function at that point. So if I, if I arrive at this point, I have found a solution and then I had made a function to print solution, which is print my grid. What a glorious name, print my grid of problem. Like so. 
and OMG, like my son would say. Here we have our solution. Yes, in this limited time, we have written a solver that solves it. By the way, very interesting. I found one solution. What if I, if I give it a bit more freedom? I, I'm going to replace that nine by zero. Still finds one solution. Hmm. What if I replace that seven by zero? Oh, now it finds two solutions, right? See, so one with a one here and one with that seven here. So that seven is more critical than that nine. Now, I've said in the beginning, right, we're going to do something useful and, and I want it because I actually really, really suck at, at, at doing Sudokus and, and other people are much faster than me at it. You, you know what I, what I still would want? I would want to know how much faster that I am than people who are good at this. So I just want to see how fast, and, and this is running on some computer on a server somewhere, somewhere, and this is a shitty, cheap ass computer. If you run it natively, it's gonna be incredibly fast, but let's, let's see how fast this, this goes. If I want to measure time, I need to include a library called um, Chrono. Let's do that. Um, and, since I don't didn't want to introduce many variable types, I'm going to introduce something else called auto, which I'm saying, you know, compiler, you're smart. Try to figure out what type it is. And I'll, I'm, I'm letting the compiler choose. So I'm using something in the standard namespace of Chrono called the high resolution clock, high resolution clock right and what do i ask it to do give me what time is it now and after i've printed the solution i'm actually gonna take the same thing and i'm gonna call that stop so if you measure the time when something starts and the time when something stops how much time did uh, pass well again a certain duration and that duration is stop minus start but it's gonna be really fast i already know it's gonna be really fast so i'm i know I've, i'm gonna have to put it in some 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 small value let's do std chrono duration cast std chrono oof, milliseconds like so that's my duration and i want to print it out of course otherwise i will not know what my duration is so i'm gonna say std say out time passed is and I'm going to put duration dot count just believe me that you need that dot counter milli seconds I'm going to finish it off with an end line because why not So this is my initial grid. This is my solution. And it took the computer the whole of five milliseconds to solve it. That means it can do um, 200 of these. Um, uh, it can do 200 of these um, every, every second. Let's write MS. So yeah, it's about four milliseconds to solve a problem like this. Um, I see that I'm running out of time. I was planning on entering a, a hard level from some other 
from some other um, uh, site as well, but I won't do it. Well, what I will do is, if you don't want to type this over, you still want to play around a bit with this code. So the, the, the site is called godbolt.org. But the nice thing is I can share you a URL, which gives you not only this godbolt code, but also the but also the code I've typed in now. So you can try it for yourself, even how I set my windows up. So how do I do this? I, I click share, I have a short link, I copy that. And then I go to a place called QR code generator. So I have a site called QR code generator. And now I just paste a URL. And this is it. If you, but this is tiny. Ah, it's not the right one. I think it's this one I meant. Was it this one I meant? Yeah, this one is better. Yeah, it's not it's not very big, but at least it's here. So you can scan this and let me let me try to zoom in a bit. Haha. <laughs> there we go. Um, so you can you can you can scan this with your camera. It will open the site with the code I've typed in, so you can you can play around with it and uh, do your own thing. That's it. Um, thank you all for listening, all of all of you who made it until the end of the program. I hope I. Um, I mean, think about it. We just defined the rules here and, and we wrote this really little thing of code. This is the backtracking algorithm. We're using recursive programming as well. All fascinating topics that will be discussed. Um, and from nothing, we wrote software that's smarter than me because it can solve Sudoku, something I can do. I can actually not be bothered with since I've written a program to do it. Um, See you all next year in DAE. I hope I hope you had a nice time. Bye bye.